Okay, right here we have uh, the beach right here and we have some houses over here on the other side of the seawall and right here we're gonna show you sea ice melting. We're gonna get show you if all the glaciers melt what would happen. Right here we have some beach water right here. It's about a few feet right over here. You could say I have this gauge right here. That's about five to ten feet, ten to fifteen feet. Right here we have about three foot waves right there, five foot waves. And you can see approximately the waves are up to ten feet right over there. And then as we had the sea ice, they'll start to melt. You can see the water just went up a little bit because that's called isostatic adjustment that causes the boats and stuff, anything that's in there, the water will float up and make the water higher because of the density of the water. I have the hair dryer. I don't know if you can see it. We're going to melt this ice from the global warming or uh, climate change, they call it now. If I could turn the thing on. You could see the water has risen up now. It's about almost 14, 15 feet. The uh, sea level rises when take the global warming, of course, the heating of the sun heats up the glaciers and melts the, and makes more water as the glaciers melt. Also tectonic plates when they move and the water, if all the glaciers melt, it's 230 feet of water it would be around the houses and that'd be about five houses tall. The ocean it, it rises at 0 0.12 inches per year. So it takes about eight, years for a uh, per inch of uh, water beaches to erode sea level rises every hundred years a foot of water is dissolved also causing the um, polar bears to go extinct polar regions and also causes more storms and also it causes a uh, you'll see in a few seconds as, as all the sea water rises up the beach is going to be underwater it's going to be a down river and also the houses they're going to be submerged under the water too there won't be any more beach left you can see the water starting to get to the top of the thing now at about 18 to 20 feet you can see some of the water's already starting to go it's starting to go into the streets now you can see the water's getting much higher now it's at the point and now it's overflowing You could see there would be major disasters if the all the sea water and the sea glaciers and the sea level rise up. You could see these houses would be underwater and the beach would be gone underwater. Everything would be bad and destroyed. We're in Seabright. We're here in Mammoth Beach right here near Seabright and you can see right here they use this rock wall or a, a sea wall right here. This protects the beach from erosion. Protects the houses from getting flooded from high tide. Okay, this is a cool area to come when during high tide. You can see the water comes over here, and this becomes like a swimming pool area when it's super high tide, like probably right after hurricanes. Sandy, this was all underwater. There was all the got up in these rocks over here during Hurricane Sandy, right over here. The jetties are the points. These are like beach protection. Thank you, like to the you can see the waves come at a parallel direction and to the shore as they become more shallow. The wave speed decreases as it feels bottom and the wavelength decreases and the wave height and the steepness increases as it bends over and crashes to land into the surf zone. Also they use relocation that's moving inland away from more safer grounds away from the waves and also the after Hurricane Sandy the flood insurance went up and they also said that you had to raise your house on stilts or they wouldn't really cover your house. I'm not sure about the exact criteria but after Hurricane Sandy you had to raise it up on stilts to protect the houses from getting flooding in the house. You could see they're dredging the beach. They're dredging it all the way from the ocean. And this is the thing. This is 51st Street. Okay, 
Here's the next street, 50, 50th Street. Forty-eight. Whoa, the ramp. 